Yes, I very much would like to continue with this Nintendo DS test on the Mini SNES. And right now we are running Yoshi's Island DS on the Mini SNES via the Desmoom 2015 core. And Mad Monkey was a tremendous help in sorting some memory issues out and everything's running quite nicely here. Obviously I would not at all expect a game such as Mario 64 or Mario Kart to run on here that well. I mean it's just what it is, but a game such as Yoshi's Island fortunately it runs quite nicely and I'm very happy with that. And we're running dual screens right now. There are a myriad of option, uh, core options you can toy around with, but I have them set up a very specific way right now, and things are running nicely for me. I'll do a few more test games as well. I remember another game I used to like on uh, DS, Tetris. Definitely gotta check out Tetris and see how that plays on here. I'm gonna do the dummy folder method. No, I'll just exit to the main user interface. I have Tetris on the main user interface. But I'll do a few more games. And yes, this will be released on Thursday. I'm going back to the main user interface real quick. And we'll load Tetris. Tetris DS. And there's an added bonus. There are actually two Nintendo DS cores now, and I'm running one of them right now. But Tetris never gets old. I mean, it, you think of a, a classic that would never, ever become boring. I mean, you could always pick up and play Tetris. But we're checking it out on DS here. Again on the Desmoom 2015 core. So far so good. Again, not perfect, but more than adequate for my needs here. I'm enjoying this immensely. And way, way better than my previous test using the PPS SPP core to run DS. That did not fare too well. I was lucky to run Yoshi's Island at 7 to 11 frames per second on that one. The way I'm tapping up on the controller right now to make the blocks fall down instantly, I'm kind of trying to remember if the DS version is the first version to ever do this, because it is a, a really, really cool gimmick just being able to tap up and just fly right down. And of course, when you have a block down there, you can uh, rotate it in place, too, rather than have it stick in place like in the original version. So I can keep rotating it endlessly until I decide where it wants to be. And I did actually beat this game by using it as a little bit of an exploit back in the day and uh, just rotating the blocks on the very, very top until I found exactly where I needed them to be. But uh, we're going to exit back to the main user interface and uh, see what else we have to check out. Should have a few more to go here. So far, so good. Very, very impressed. We have a uh, Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. And I still need to see the new Solo movie. I did see Deadpool 2, and it was a really, really fun movie. And Avengers Infinity War before that. But I still would like to see Solo. I really, really hope they didn't butcher that too bad. But we're checking out Star Wars Revenge of the Sith for the DS here. And we should be in game here in a few seconds. And I'll try to see if I have anything else that we can play around with uh, game test wise here. And as mentioned, some of the more intensive 3D games like Mario 64 and Mario Kart do not at all expect them to run well on here. It is what it is. But uh, there are quite a few games that I've tested that run awesome. So Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. And 
And yes, you can use your analog as the stylus, and you can actually use the R2 button to touch the screen if you'd like to. And you can even go into the core options and make it where you have the top and bottom screen, or just the top screen, or just the bottom. I mean, you have a myriad of options to play around with, as I mentioned a minute or two ago. Running awesome. And I'm always a big fan of any game where you could upgrade your character. I mean, there's always a, a nice lure to being able to upgrade. Running real nicely here. Got your classic Star Wars music. So yes, we have DS at near full speed, and I'm very impressed with this. Now again, thank Mad Monkey immensely for his incredible help with this. And let's see if we have anything else here. I'm going to do the dummy folder method here. Yes, it does work via the dummy folder or low content or low core. I'll go to a low DS folder here with some random games and uh, we'll load one and see how it works. We'll try loading a... Uh, and I was told this is not the best RPG, but it actually runs well on here. So I'm going to load it for a second. I've been told Chrono Trigger is much better and a definitive version on here. And uh, it actually does run incredibly well. It will not be in this test video, but check it out for yourself. Chrono Trigger does run on this core quite well. And of course, I'll have a little bit of a performance upgrade on release. I mean, it, before usually I would release the core and then do a performance upgrade, but this time it's going to be a dual release where I'm going to have the performance upgrade in conjunction with the core release. Let's see how this plays out real quick. Seems to be running at a good frame rate, music's good and everything, and again, I heard it's not the best RPG, but I like RPGs enough to want to at least give this a try, and I've liked the previous Lunar games on Sega CD. Yeah, not complaining there. Let's see what else we have here. And I tried a few games that I would really, really like to run, such as Contra, and uh, they didn't load, but again, it's... I'm more than happy with what I have right now. And Mario Kart, as I mentioned, will not run well. You can run Super Princess Peach if you'd like to. That actually runs decently. And I'll load one game with the other uh, core as well. The only thing I have to tell you about the other core, the Mel and DS core, are there, there are no core options. So you're much more limited and it, you pretty much have to stick to your RetroArch options only. You have no specific core options like you have with Desmoom 2015. But we're trying out Super Princess Peach real fast. See how this runs. Nintendo. Not quite as impactful as people singing Sega. <laughs> but it works. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure there was a Ninja Gaiden game on DS as well, and I'm definitely going to have to try that out and see if that were, runs on here, because I am a big fan of Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden Black on Xbox is one of my absolute favorite games of all time. And I did a really, really goofy thing one time. There's a part where you can get an oxygen mask and go through the underwater level. I actually used uh, health. Uh, health revival to go through the whole underwater area without an oxygen mask. Yes, I made it all the way through the underwater area without the oxygen mask, and that was a big bumble goof for me. But 
I beat the game, and I'd have to say it's one of the most difficult games, definitely up there with Battletoads. This ru is running quite nicely here. And yes, you can use the bottom of the screen too if you'd like to. You can use the analog and just tap the R2 button and touch whatever you want on the, on the touch screen. It's really cool. And of course, if you have USB hosts, you can use the mouse if you'd like to.